Hey guys and girls, we're back with a tutorial. It's been a while and uh, I realized that uh, these are long overdue, uh, but rest assured there's many, many productivity apps that we've been trying out um, in the second brain domain a lot as well. And the first one that I want to show you is Readwise Reader. As you know, we've covered Readwise in the past and it's really interesting to see how much they've built in the last few years. Now I realized that, that it's not only Readwise nowadays that they've built, but also Readwise Reader, which is a new app. So Readwise has their, their main app, which is to make highlights and basically remember what you read, but also get new highlights or random highlights resurfaced that you might've read a few years ago. Since we recovered Readwise on our podcast, a lot of people around me and friends um, have been using it. It's really interesting to see how everyone uses it in their own way. And Readwise is continuing basically to, to really build apps and, and tools and integrations to support power readers effectively. And the, the new thing that they added to their tool chain is Readwise Reader. I think it's really cool. It's, it's come out a few months ago already. So that's why I said it's long overdue, but uh, I, I really enjoy using the app. I've been using it for a while now, and I wasn't really sure either what to make of it initially, because I used uh, a lot of these apps. There's Pocket, which is quite nice, Instapaper, uh, uh, there's Matter. Matter is actually, I think, one of the better ones uh, that I've used. And then there's Readwise Reader. And in my opinion, Readwise Reader really is the best. And I'll show you in a bit why I think that is. Um, but I, I took some time to, to, to really go through all of them and, and use them for several months because these things really have to like integrate personally. Whereas Readwise for, for highlights, I think is, is quite unique. There's very few apps that do exactly what Readwise does, which, which is extremely cool to me. Anyways, thanks again, Readwise team for building such a cool app. Uh, let me take you uh, through this right now. All right, so what you can do with Readwise Reader is, for example, the first most common use case, I believe, is that you can save articles or, or pages, any page really, um, you can save that to Readwise Reader and then read it within the app. Um, that could be because you want to read it later or you want to read it in a better format and you can highlight things from the app itself. Imagine you're browsing the web. So here I am, internet, browsing the web, looking great. And I'm reading an article, interesting article about using Golang as a mobile library uh, for the non techies out there, some technical stuff. Now, this is nice to read, but maybe I want to make highlights. Um, I want to read it later. I'm just reading the first few. Oh, it's possible. Okay, cool. Uh, it makes, makes sense to me. Let me save this. So I click on the read wise icon here. Boom. And then you can see it working there. And there we go. It's been saved to reader. Now, what is quite cool is I can highlight things immediately from Reader. Look at this. So now that I've saved in a Reader, a Medium also has their own bar, of course, but this is the Readwise Reader one, and I can delete this highlight. So I can continue reading here and still make highlights, which is quite neat. But if I want to, I can also open this in Reader. So this, here we go, here it is, and we can start reading. Now I can highlight things from here, and they immediately become available in Readwise, so the Readwise app that you use for highlights, which I think is quite neat. So here I have my my uh, tags. These are actually also the same tags that I use in um, uh, in Readwise. So um, for example, I say programming. That tag I haven't used yet from Readwise Reader, apparently. Uh, so it's not been synced, but maybe I want to get a tag. So maybe I want to create a tag Golang here, right? So you can see how a tag does Golang. Okay, cool. So there's a couple of other options you can also use. Um, you'll have some information here in the sidebar, quite useful. You can edit that metadata by clicking here or going here. And that's also Ghost Reader. And Ghost Reader is a, an AI integration that Readwise Reader has built that allows you to do a couple of things. I can ask it a question. I can summarize it. I can generate thought-provoking questions, which you can also spur yourself to engage with the, the contents more, especially when it's a complicated document. And you can generate Q&A. If you want, you can also write your own prompt. But for example, let's say that I want to summarize it for now. Here it goes. Ghost Reader starts becoming active. And here we have the GPT 3.5, because 4 still is quite expensive for the credits. A 3.5 generated summary of the document. Quite neat, because it also shows me some things that I immediately want to know that I actually didn't have time uh, to read fully, right? So this is one of the benefits that you get. If I really like the article, I can move it to a short list. There we go. And now it's shortlisted. I don't use the shortlist myself as much. So this is something that I actually can remove from home. Now imagine you have a, a PDF because that's also obviously something that you might run into, right? 
There are some papers that I want to read. For example, reading this paper about secure multi-party computation. And what it allows me to do is, this is from a PDF. So I went through the internet to this website. Here you go. This PDF. And I saved it. And it ended in Readwise. And here I can make all kinds of highlights. And I lost my progress, which is a little bit unfortunate. But you can see that I hear where I left off recently. So for example, here, I want to make a highlight and I want to add a note. This can be effective against the tax. Uh, such an interesting note. There we go. So this is the way I used it so far. Uh, it's a really useful tool for research primarily. Um, what I appreciate about it as well, because I personally use an iPad, is that on my Mac, things are quite distracting uh, simply because there are so many apps and also because I'm habitualized to open those apps on my laptop, right? So Slack and email, et cetera. Those are apps that are, for me, very tied to my laptop. Now I have an iPad that I sometimes use as a second monitor for my laptop, um, but I deinstalled the email and Slack and all these messaging and distracting apps. So the association that I have with my iPad is much more quiet and, and focused. I do have Readwise Reader on there, so what I'll do in there is I'll make some notes and I can actually open it in a split screen kind of uh, state. So on one side of the screen, I have Reader's Reader. On the other side, I have like a Miro or another note-taking app that I can draw with my pencil in or my uh, Apple Pencil. And that is so far extremely productive. So for doing research, I really like this. Um, another really cool feature is to have your own library. So you can scroll through all the articles that you've saved. Well, for me, it's 523 things. It's quite a lot. Um, obviously, at some point, yeah, th this becomes unmaintainable. So you can create your own filters. So for example, here I have paid newsletters. So there's PDFs. This is a subsection. If you want to create a new filter, you can do that pretty easily. You can go here and then click on Manage. These filtered views are the ones that I currently have. And you can see here what the queries are. So longer than 10 minutes, this is an interesting one. Everything that is uh, estimated to take a lo longer than 10 minutes to read is saved in this one. If I go back here, then I can also create a new filter view. So for example, I say tag is crypt cryptocurrency. Here I go. These are all tag cryptocurrency. And now I can save this view. Now it's a filtered view and I say crypto tag. And then this will end up here, crypto tag in my sidebar. Now that's quite convenient because you can make these queries as complex as you want. So it's a little bit technical, so you have to feel comfortable with it. There's some documentation, of course, available about how to uh, write these queries, but I would definitely recommend you to try to organize your stuff this way. Um, to be honest, I don't do it nearly enough because most of the time what I end up doing, and this is a guilty, I'm guilty of this, uh, I just read whatever I focus on and I try to read it from start to finish and then I archive it. Um, so this really active organization for me sometimes leads to not actually engaging with the content as much, but I just create really big piles of very well-organized stuff that I won't read anyways. So what I try to do is just read a few things and then archive them. Um, so as you can see that these things are archived because I actually all read them. Um, you can also add documents directly from here. So what I really appreciate here is that uh, you can subscribe to RSS feeds. And the cool part of this, uh, next to, of course, is the fact that you can add URLs and upload files yourself, which is pretty easy to do through the Chrome extension as well, um, is that I can generate my own RSS feeds. So when I use an app, like um, there's an, an app called RSS, rss.app, here you go. And what you can do is you can actually aggregate RSS feeds this way. And RSS feeds are actually not as well known as I sometimes hope they are because they're, they're extremely useful. There's RSS feeds from probably most of the news websites that you read. Uh, you can also ingest them in Slack. Now, you can play around with a, a lot of RSS feeds where you can say with this app specifically, imagine I really like reading about all the stuff that is happening in the tech industry. So I go to the information. Um, I might have a private or personalized RSS feed for this, but maybe at the same time, I also have a paid podcast on say the knowledge project, which is a great podcast, definitely a recommendation by the way. And uh, I'm a paid, uh, paid member. 
So this gives you a private RSS feed because some of the, uh, the episodes that they produce are private. Um, this private RSS feed you can use to pull the podcasts into um, your podcast app. But theoretically, you can also pull this into Readwise Reader. All right, so I've just logged into the members area. And what you can see here is that I have my own feed URL. I'd like to say stay private with this feed URL. I don't know what uh, what rights I'm uh, violating if I share it with you guys. Um, anyways, I have my own RSS feed uh, there. And I've imported that in Reader as well. So what you'll see is that in my feed, then I get these private podcasts that they've produced, which is pretty cool. So here's Naval Ravikant, the latest. So it imports the latest five elements automatically when I import one. And this one is interesting. Okay, cool. So here I have a small description of the podcast. It also already generated a summary for me. And then I can just assess whether I think it's interesting. Now, this allows me to, to basically ingest all of these things directly uh, into my Readwise Reader. Now, going back to the RSS app, what you can do is, obviously, these feeds are not necessarily always exactly uh, filled with all the information you want. So you can maybe filter in certain keywords. And this is what you can do with rss.app. So what I really like to use it for is if I have a lot of RSS feeds on a particular topic that I want to follow, but I'm not particularly interested in getting every single article in my Readwise Reader because otherwise it's going to clutter everything. Instead, I use this app, import the RSS feeds there, and apply some, some more custom filters that make sure that they filter out the stuff that I don't want. And then it's actually uh, only pulled into my Readwise Reader when I really want it. Um, there is one other really interesting thing that I want to show you which is that you can email stuff to Readwise Reader. And that, I think, is a very valuable feature. This is the email that I use for my Readwise uh, imports. So here you can see my Gmail. And what I can do is I create a filter, and I say from. Well, that maybe I don't need, but I can say to. And I fill my, I put in my own email address. Here you see it, read later. Now, this read later email actually has a filter set up so here, what I've done is in my Gmail, I have set up a filter. And that means that whenever I sign up for a newsletter, I will not put in my own email. And then because it's a Gmail address, they have a really cool feature where you can write something plus read later at gmail.com. You get here is that the forward here so that all the email uh, uh, newsletters that you subscribe to uh, actually end up in your readwise reader. Um, same goes for Twitter threads. So you can save Twitter threads directly. Or if you're on Twitter, you can just click the Chrome extension. Um, there's a few other features that I personally don't use that much, uh, but the, the primary one is uh, is these. If you have any other things that you find yourself that are really interesting, let me know. They have integrations as well that I definitely think worth uh, looking into. I hooked it up to Instapaper to import my stuff. Uh, I haven't used Pocket for a very long time, so that's obviously one of the reasons I didn't integrate it. Um, and I also put in my own API key for uh, OpenAI, so that makes it pretty easy for me to to use the uh, Ghost Reader features. Um, I would also recommend connecting your Twitter. It allows a couple of cool features like saving whole threads. Um, it's quite a quite neat to do it that way. There's one more thing that I really think I should show you. Imagine you have a YouTube video. This is where it becomes extremely cool. Now, when you have a YouTube video saved to Reader, same as always, you can just click the web extension in Chrome or in Firefox or any other browser and save it to Readwise Reader. And then you start watching the video. You want to retain as much as you can, right? If, if it's not like just relaxed watching, but you really want to understand, then you can actually click on the text because it has a transcript. And cool part here is that it will follow. So he's speaking. And the, this will follow along with what he is saying. I can pause the video, and then I can highlight what he has said. And the transcript feature is actually quite great. And this is the first app that I've ever found that really allows you to highlight well-transcripted text from a YouTube video. Now, there's, there's apps for this for podcasts that Niels uh, went through in his recent walkthrough of Snipped. But this is not possible for YouTube videos. And this is the only app that allows you to do that. And I know that a lot of people like me are excited about infotainment. They're addicted to infotainment, perhaps even. Um, I know I sometimes have binges where I watch five or 10 videos about a particular topic. And it's really interesting. And I want to retain more. So I either pull open my Obsidian and create a summary or synthesis of what I've learned. And I'll link it to the right things. Ideally, I also have my Readwise highlights that are synced to Readwise. And then also I can pull into my Obsidian to link things together even better. Um, so this is a, this is a really useful, useful way to synthesize your, your information. 
Um, I would definitely recommend using Redress Reader specifically for this. Um, there's a lot of really cool apps, as I said, there's Get Better, Pocket, and Instapaper, but this is the only one that I've found that really allows you to do this. Now, I haven't used all of them for a few months because I decided to stick to Redress Reader. So if I'm wrong with anything and there's new features and some of the other apps that you think are worth mentioning, please do tell me because uh, I'll try them out. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I think Readwise Reader is definitely worth trying if you're not using it already. We have a affiliate link that you can use to get 60 days free on Readwise itself. It's in the description, so make sure to use that if you're interested in trying Readwise out for yourself, especially if you use Readwise Reader. I think it's an interesting combination and it will help you retain what you learn a lot more, especially as you continue making highlights in the stuff that you read. I wish you a happy day and don't forget to like and subscribe.